All right, welcome to another deep dive. This time, we're going to be cracking open the world of pharmaceuticals. Oh, this is going to be good. It is. We've got this really interesting document, a university-level pharmacy orientation. And I got to tell you, it is not your average pharmacy oh, 101. No, you're going to find some surprises in here, some stuff that'll make you rethink how drugs are regulated and used all around the world. Oh, like what? Give me a teaser. Like, did you know the way the U.S. figures out its drug standards? It's uh, kind of unique. Really? All right. Color me intrigued. Let's dive in then. Uh. So this document kicks off talking about pharmacopias yeah. and formularies. Can you break those down for us? They sound kind of intimidating. Yeah, they do sound a bit like, you know, ancient scrolls or something. But right. basically, they're just like the rule books, the official standards for drugs and devices, making sure they're pure, the right strength, good quality. The thing is, most countries, it's their government that sets these standards. But the U.S., they do things a little differently. Oh, how so? It's actually private organizations in the U.S. who put out these super important documents. Kind of unusual when you compare it to how other countries do it. So in the U.S., we've got these private groups deciding what's what for our medications. Yeah. Interesting. And the document mentions official versus non-official compendia. What's the difference there? So official means it's legally recognized by a government. Thing like the United States Pharmacopoeia, the British one, the Egyptian one, those are all official. They're the top dogs, the gold standard for quality in their countries. Makes sense. So what about formularies? Are those similar? Formularies are a little different. They're more about like lists of approved medications and what they're used for. Often it's specific to, say, a certain healthcare system. Yeah. You've got the British National Formulary, the Egyptian National Formulary, stuff like that. Got it. So pharmacopias are about quality standards. Formularies are more about what's approved and how it's used. Okay, I'm starting to get it. The U.S. Pharmacopoeia National Formulary, the USPNF, that one really caught my eye. It's like the superstar of drug standards, at least in the U.S. Yeah, definitely a big player. The cool thing is it's actually two publications mashed together. You've got the USP part that's all about the drugs themselves, the therapeutic substances, and the NF part that covers something called excipients. Excipients, what are those? Okay, think of them as the unsung heroes of the medication world, the inactive ingredients that help deliver the drug properly. Fillers, coatings, preservatives, that kind of thing. They might not be the active part of the drug, but without them, it wouldn't work as intended. Huh. Never thought about that. So the USPNF covers both the active stuff and the stuff that helps it work. Interesting. But here's something that surprised me. The document says not every single drug that's approved in the U.S. is actually in the USPNF. Why is that? Well, it's because the USPNF, they're picky. They only include drugs and excipients that have really specific standards, the ones that everyone agrees on, set by the U.S. Pharmacopeial Convention. It's like, you got to be extra good to make it into this club. So it's not enough just to be approved. You got to be top tier, meet these extra strict standards to get in. That's wild. And then to make things even more interesting, the USP recently started including herbal drugs in its standards. It's like they're trying to stay ahead of the curve as more people are you know, turning to natural remedies. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of staying ahead of the curve, there's this other compendium mentioned in the document, Martindale, the extra pharmacopoeia. That one blew my mind a little. Extra pharmacopoeia. Okay, that sounds intense. What makes Martindale so special? Martindale, it's like this worldwide resource, covers medications from all over the globe. And the crazy part is, unlike other pharmacopoeias, it includes even proprietary stuff, information about the companies making the drug. It's like, a one-stop shop to understand the whole global pharmaceutical landscape. Wow, that's incredible. All this talk about pharmacopias and formularies really brings up how important drug safety and effectiveness are. But what about the folks actually giving out these medications? Mm. What about the pharmacists themselves? Oh, great point. They play a way bigger role than people think. It's not just counting pills and slapping on labels. Pharmacists are seriously involved in so many different parts of healthcare. So it's time to bust some stereotypes then. This document lays out eight key areas of pharmacy, and it's way more diverse than I ever imagined. Totally. Let's start with one that often gets overlooked, regulatory control and drug management. Whoa, okay, that sounds serious. What do pharmacists actually DO in that area? These are the pharmacists working for the government, and they're basically the guardians of making sure drugs are safe and that people can actually get them. 
They're shaping drug policies, making sure the quality's there, handling how the medications get distributed, all that behind the scenes stuff. So like the air traffic controllers of the pharmacy world, making sure things run smoothly and safely. Yeah, exactly. They got to be total experts on all the regulations, how to get the drugs where they need to be, and of course the medications themselves. They might be involved in everything from buying and distributing the drugs to figuring out which ones are essential for public health. Wow, that's a huge e responsibility. And then there's the pharmacists we typically think of, the ones working in the community pharmacies. Right. That's a massive part of pharmacy, too. And it's where most people actually interact with the pharmacist. But those community pharmacists, they do way more than just hand out prescriptions. You're right, actually. I'm always asking my pharmacist questions about over-the-counter stuff or even just general health advice. And that's a super important service they provide. For a lot of people, especially those who maybe don't see a doctor regularly, the pharmacist is their most accessible healthcare person. That's so true. They're on the front lines answering questions, giving out meds, and making sure no one's misusing anything. Exactly. Unsung heroes of healthcare, seriously, playing a big role in keeping people safe and healthy. It's amazing how much they do. <laughs> okay, let's shift gears to another area this document talks about hospital pharmacy. That's where things get even more specialized, right? Oh, for sure. Hospital pharmacists are working in a crazy fast-paced environment. Got to be on top of their game. They work super closely with doctors and nurses to make sure patients are getting the best possible care. So it's not just filling prescriptions in a hospital. It's really being a core part of that patient care team. Exactly. Think about it. They're the ones making those sterile solutions for IVs and injections, advising doctors on which medication's best for each patient, making sure there are no bad interactions with their history. They even keep track of all the patient's meds, making sure they're getting the right dose, not having any bad side effects. Man, sounds challenging, but super rewarding at the same time. Really starting to see how diverse this pharmacy world is. And we're just getting started. There's also industrial pharmacy, where pharmacists are knee deep in the research and development of new medications. That's where the magic happens. Okay, tell me more about what they do there. That's the part I always imagine, people in lab coats mixing things up. Well, imagine getting a new drug all the way to market. It's a long, complicated process, and pharmacists are in it every step of the way. Research, development, making sure quality's top-notch during manufacturing. They even get involved in patent applications and drug registration. So not just lab work, but legal and regulatory stuff, too. Sounds like they need to be super versatile. Absolutely. Industrial pharmacy is all about bringing together science, business, and a deep understanding of the whole industry. This is fascinating. Pharmacy really IS about so much more than just handing out pills. It's about safety, research, and playing this key role in the entire healthcare system. Okay, we've talked community, hospital, and industrial pharmacy so far. What other surprises are in store? Well, how about military pharmacy? That's not one people usually think of right away. You're telling me military pharmacy. That's got to be intense A&D interesting. What does that involve? Military pharmacists, they have some really unique jobs. They might be making generic drugs for the armed forces, making sure there's a steady supply of meds, even in really remote or difficult places. Whoa, that sounds like a logistical nightmare. I can't imagine managing a pharmacy in a war zone or on a ship in the middle of the ocean. Right. It takes a special kind of person to be a military pharmacist. They got to be adaptable, resourceful, and obviously know their meds inside out. Definitely seeing a theme here. Pharmacists are like the ultimate multitaskers. <laughs> Okay, what else is on this list of pharmacy awesomeness? You've got family planning, academic activities, and training other healthcare workers. Each one's unique, but they all play a crucial part in the big picture of healthcare. I'm seriously blown away by how diverse this profession is. Okay, before we get into those last few areas, let's do a quick recap. We started off with those rule books, the pharmacopias and formularies, the ones making sure our medications are safe and high quality. And we learned that the U.S., well, they have their own unique way of setting those standards, using private groups instead of the government. Yeah, and then we started looking at all the different roles pharmacists play. It's way more than just handing out pills. They're involved in regulation, giving advice in the community, playing a key role in hospitals, even navigating the industrial pharmacy world and the challenges of military pharmacy. It's been quite a journey already, and there's still more to come. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll dig into those remaining areas of pharmacy and uncover even more surprising stuff about this amazing profession. You know, before we move on, I wanted to touch on something we mentioned earlier, those over-the-counter medications, the OTC drugs. Just because you don't need a prescription doesn't mean they're totally harmless, right? Oh, totally agree. It's easy to forget. 
Those OTC meds are still drugs. They can have side effects if you're not careful, especially, especially with kids. Yeah, kids, right. Their bodies are still growing. They react differently to meds than adults do. Got to be extra cautious there. So even if it's something you can just grab off the shelf, always a good idea to check with the doc or the pharmacist, especially before giving anything to a child. Absolutely. Pharmacists can be such a great resource for info on kids' medications. They can tell you the right dose, help you understand any side effects. This whole conversation is really driving home how involved pharmacists are in like every aspect of healthcare, from your local pharmacy to hospitals, research labs, even the military. Their expertise is needed everywhere. It really is. Hmm. Knowing all about medications, how they work, it's vital for keeping patients safe and making sure treatments are as effective as possible. They're kind of like the unsung heroes, constantly working behind the scenes to make sure those medications are being used safely and correctly. Yeah, I like that, unsung heroes. They're the bridge between all the complicated science and the people who need those meds, making sure everyone understands them and uses them the right way. This deep dive has definitely given me a whole new appreciation for how complex this pharmacy world is. It's like everything's connected. It is. It's fascinating seeing how it all comes together, those standards from the pharmacopias and formularies to all the different roles pharmacists play. And it's empowering to know that we as patients can be more involved too. If we take the time to understand how it all works, we can make smarter decisions about our own medications. Exactly. When we know about our meds, the good and the bad, the potential benefits and risks, then we can really advocate for our own health. Okay, so we still have a few more areas of pharmacy to uncover. Hmm. You mentioned family planning earlier, and that one really surprised me. What's the connection there? Yeah, you don't automatically think pharmacists when you think family planning, but they actually play a big part, especially in places where people might not have easy access to other healthcare providers. So what exactly do they do in family planning? A lot, actually. They educate women about all the different types of contraception, explaining the pros and cons of each, helping them choose what's best for them, you know, based on their situation and their needs. That's so important. There are so many options out there. It can be overwhelming trying to figure it all out on your own. Totally. And they can offer general counseling on reproductive health, you know, talk about safe sex practices, answer any questions women might have. In some cases, they might even be able to prescribe certain contraceptives themselves, which really helps people get access to those services. Wow. I had no idea pharmacists were so involved in family planning. Makes sense, though, being that they're often the easiest healthcare professional to reach for a lot of folks. OK, what about academic activities? I know the document mentioned that, too. What are pharmacists doing in the world of academia? Well, think of it like professors in any other field. Pharmacists teach, they mentor students, they do research, you know, training the next generation of pharmacists at universities and schools, passing on all that knowledge. So not just practicing pharmacy, but teaching and researching too, shaping the future of the field. That's pretty cool. It is, and their research can be about anything, really. Developing new drugs, finding better ways to deliver them, studying how different groups of people are affected by certain meds. Their contributions to science are huge. Really inspiring to see that dedication, not just to doing their job, but to making the whole field better. Okay, so we've got family planning and academic activities covered. How about that last one, training other healthcare workers? This is another big one where pharmacists are crucial for making sure medications are being used properly and safely. They often train other healthcare professionals like doctors, nurses, physician assistants. Ah, so it's about sharing that expertise, collaborating to make sure patients get the best possible care, everyone working together. Right. They might do training sessions on new medications, update everyone on the latest guidelines for prescribing, maybe even run workshops on things like drug interactions or how to avoid medication errors. It's like they're really making sure everyone involved in taking care of patients is up to date on all the latest info and doing things the right way when it comes to medication. Exactly. Their knowledge is super valuable for making sure those meds are being used responsibly and effectively throughout the whole healthcare system. This whole deep dive has been such an eye opener. I had no idea how much goes on in the world of pharmacy. People just picture them behind a the counter, counting out pills. But it's so much more than that. It really is. It's about safety, making treatments work, pushing the boundaries of scientific knowledge. And they play such a big role in so many different areas of healthcare, from community settings to hospitals to research labs, even the military. And I love how dedicated they are to always learning more, mm -hmm. always sharing what they know with 
others, whether it's patients or students or other healthcare professionals. Absolutely. They're constantly trying to stay ahead of the curve, making sure they're giving the best care possible and contributing to our understanding of pharmaceuticals. Okay, so we've explored all eight areas of pharmacy outlined in this document, and I have to say, I'm impressed. It's clear that pharmacists are way more than just dispensers of medications. They're essential members of the healthcare team, working to keep patients safe and healthy, and pushing the boundaries of what we know about medications. I totally agree. It's been amazing unpacking all this info, and I think we've both come away with a much deeper understanding of how vital pharmacy is in the world. We have. But before we wrap up this deep dive, there's one more fascinating piece to this puzzle that we need to explore. Remember how we talked about those super exclusive compendia like the USPNF with those really high standards for drug quality and safety? Yeah, I remember. It's pretty surprising to learn that not every single drug approved in the U.S. actually makes it into those books. Exactly. And that really got me thinking. If we as patients understand that not all drugs are created equal, how can we use that knowledge to make better choices about our health? Ooh, good question. I think it boils down to being informed and not being afraid to ask questions. So if we're worried about the quality of a certain medication, we can ask our doctor or pharmacist if it's included in a recognized pharmacopoeia like the USPNF. Absolutely. And you can ask what kind of standards it has to meet, what testing it went through. If it's not in a pharmacopoeia, ask why not. Knowing these details can really help you make good choices about your treatment. It's about being proactive, advocating for ourselves, making sure we're getting the highest quality medications possible. Exactly. This whole deep dive has shown how important it is to be knowledgeable when it comes to navigating the world of medications and pharmaceuticals. Absolutely. And I think that's the perfect lead in to the final part of our deep dive. We've covered a ton of ground, but there's one last question we need to tackle. What's the big takeaway from all of this? What do we want our listeners to walk away with? Stay tuned for part three, where we'll wrap up our exploration of the fascinating world of pharmaceuticals and leave you with some food for thought. All right, welcome back for the final part of our deep dive, this time into the world of pharmaceuticals. We've talked about so much from those like rule books of drug standards to all the different things pharmacists do. It's been a wild ride. It really has. Definitely opened my eyes to a whole new world. I think we both have a way better understanding now of just how complex and important this whole field is, right? 100%. But before we wrap up, I want to go back to something we touched on earlier. Remember how we talked about how not all drugs are created equal? Some meet those super strict standards of pharmacopias, yeah. like the USPNF, but others don't. Right. Those compendia are really selective. Only the drugs that meet those really high bars for quality and safety get included. Exactly. So that got me thinking, if we understand this you know, as patients, how can we use this knowledge to make better choices for our own health? I think it comes down to like being your own advocate, right? Being informed and not being afraid to ask questions. So like if we're concerned about a specific medication, could we ask our doctor or pharmacist, hey, is this in a recognized pharmacopoeia? Like the USPNF or something? Yeah, totally. Those are great questions. You can ask about the standards, what testing it went through. And if it's not in one of those pharmacopoeias, you can even ask why not? It's about taking charge of our health, not just blindly accepting whatever we're given. Exactly. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to navigating this complex world of pharmaceuticals. For sure. And I think that's the perfect way to wrap things up. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of pharmaceuticals. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe even learned a thing or two about how intricate and important this whole field is. Yeah, it's been fun. And who knows, maybe this sparks some curiosity for you to explore other corners of the pharmaceutical world. There's always more to learn. Absolutely. Keep those brains buzzing, and we'll see you next time.